the first time I met my husband, Quincy, was on a mutual friend status. Um, this mutual friend, I believe, is watching me right now, and he will know himself. Um, so there was a day I was just going through my phone, being entertained by people's statuses. And then I came across this particular friend's status. Um, he had posted Quincy, that was my husband. And it was sort of like an appreciation post to him for something he may have done for him. I, I can't really remember. But um, when I saw him on his status, I was like, wow, this is like, this is a really handsome man. And I think I would like to get to know him. This I said in my head, I didn't tell uh, my friend just immediately, but I asked who uh, that gentleman was from my friend. And then he told me that um, that's one of his good friends. So, Quickly, he said he's sure that he's single, so he would like to tell him about me and we get to know each other. So eventually he did and he gave my contact to Quincy and we started talking from there on. I was chatting with my friend Ken and he was like, Quincy, you said you'd be single, I guess some girl give you. And when he said it, I wasn't so excited because I've had such instances where I'll, I'll hear that, oh, there's this girl who saw you on Facebook or this was interested in you. She would like to get to know you. And then you start having conversation with a person and then the interest is not really there. So when he told me, I wasn't all that, you know, excited, but I just listened to him. Then he kept, you know, Ah, she's a very nice girl, oh. she's a pharmacist, she's this, she's very cool, she's beautiful. Then, then I said, okay, you send me her number. And then he gave me her number, I called. We didn't really say much, we started texting. Around that time, I had noticed one um, lady in church. And I was, I've never seen her before, I was like, wow, this girl, she's really nice. Like, I would like to get to know this lady. So my focus was on her, rather. Because me, I know usually when people connect you with other females, it doesn't really work out. So this one is my own project. So I tried getting to know this young lady. I realized she was um, close to a friend of mine in church. So I was telling him that, oh, this lady, she's nice. I'd like to get to know her. But then when I was talking, you know, to her, I realized the connection wasn't really there. And at the time, I was also, you know, talking with my wife, Abigail, my wife now. So there was a time when, I think it was a Saturday or a Sunday after church. It was a Sunday. And then she told me she had got tickets and that we should go and see a white. And in my mind, I was like, ah, Charlie, this girl is like, she's serious. The one that I'm focusing on, I'm not really seeing any action, but it looks like this other girl is serious. So from that day, it snapped that, no, you let me focus on him. And when, you know, I started getting, you know, closer to her, I realized like she was everything I ever prayed for. The first time I saw him was around March, maybe middle March. I'm not, I can't really remember, middle March thereabout. We met um, at Seco, Papa's Pizza. We sat, talked for a while, and I don't know, we liked each other from then. But we didn't say, you know, he didn't say it immediately. But we knew we liked each other. And from there on, um, I think in May, yeah, May, there about early part of May, he asked me to be his girlfriend. So I gave it some thought, I gave it some time, and by the 17th of May, um, I accepted his proposal, and then we started dating from there onwards. Before I, I decided to get into a relationship, I told God that I made a list of the things I would want 
in the lady I would date because the next person I'm going to date would be the person I would marry. And it was just like magic. Everything was taken out. About proposal, marriage proposal, it wasn't a question he popped up because right from when we started dating, um, we had made up our minds that we are going to get married. We dated for a while. I think we dated for two or three years. And then in um, 2021, we, we got married. On the 27th of November, we got married. The wedding was quite simple. Um, nothing too uh, fancy. It was just simple, quiet. I had the right people around me to attend. And that was most fulfilling for me. Okay, so my question is, why did you choose me? Well, um, I chose you because before we met, I had um, made a list of what I want in the woman I'm going to marry. And getting to know you, I realized everything was taken from me. So it was more of a a confirmation from God that this is the person I wanted. So it was that easy for me. It was easy, okay, yeah. I see. What about you? Okay, for me, it's not like, <laughs> okay, I don't want it to sound some way, but it's not like I had many options. I actually prayed for you. And what I asked for specifically is what I saw in you. So. Um, you just came in at the right time, and that's why I had to choose you. Ten. <laughs> hmm. What do you love about us? Oh, I love that we are friends. We can tell each other anything. Um, we are not influenced by people or friends. Um, I think we have a strong bond. What about you? I would say same. Right? We, what we decide is what we do. People don't use, um, people don't really have, I would say, much of an influence, especially when we've made a decision together. And the fact that we are very good friends, we share everything, like we are an open book. You know every single thing about me. And I know every single thing about you. That's true. Okay. That's it. Mm. At what point did you realize that you wanted me you wanted to marry me? Was there a point? I think um the very first day you asked me to be your girlfriend. In fact, the way you went about it was very different. I've never had that um, kind of thing with anyone else. Uh, you bought me a silver necklace and you said a few sweet words and then you asked me to be your girlfriend. I know you were expecting the answer right then and there that evening, but I said, I would wait and give you an answer. Um, probably, I think that answer came in like two weeks, three weeks. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, that's it. So why, why didn't you answer me right then? <laughs> well, you knew you say yes, so <laughs> what was all the drama about? <laughs> you can't just say yes like that. You need to wait a while. <laughs> the telling of your lies was... <laughs> What was the question again? The question is to you. Yes, to me. Yeah. When did I get to know how you be the one I'm married? Okay, so at a point in my life, 2018, there, but I think my um, relationship with God was making much sense. And for the first time in my life at that point, I knew you date to marry. Back then, I thought, you know, dating was. If you see a nice girl and you like her, you know, you just date. 
no formula, you know, you just do whatever you want. But getting closer to God, I realized, you no, know, there is a purpose why you are dating. The dating is a vehicle taking you somewhere, which is marriage. And so I had said to myself that the next person I'm dating would be the person I'll marry. So the moment I found out that, you know, you were everything I prayed for and I decided that I'm going to date you, I knew I was going to marry you. Alright, next question. When you talk about our marriage to people, what do you usually see? Um, I do not deliberately talk about our marriage per se to people because um, you know, I still have single friends and sometimes you wouldn't want to be rubbing it into people's faces, you know, when you know that they are single and you are married and you know, you always want to talk about how you are enjoying your marriage. Most of the times people don't even see the downside to their marriage. So I like to be more um, I like to be more, uh, should I say, considerate. So I, I don't really talk about marriage with my friends, uh, our marriage with my friends who are single. What I usually do is to encourage them that if they are dating, they should focus, marriage should be at the back of their mind. They shouldn't just, you know, date for dating sake. If it doesn't work out, fine. but. If you have it at the back of your mind that this is the person I'm going to marry, then you will know that, okay, this will work for me, this will not work for me. So basically, that's what I do. I don't really talk much about my married life to people. What about you? Mm, for me, you know, I'm a very quiet person. I don't um, have that many friends. And uh, usually, maybe or generally, when people are talking about their marriages, um, I don't talk about mine. <laughs> not that I don't want to, but it's not something I'd I would like to do. Um, mm -hmm. But generally, I portray that we have a good marriage. I don't rub it in people's faces. No, I portray that you're a good husband to me, and I'm also trying my best to be a good wife to you. That's my turn. Mm -hmm. <sighs> if you could change one thing about, if you could change one thing in our relationship, what would it be? Mm, I wish we married earlier and had our dating period uh, like shorter. I think that's the only thing. Mm, nothing too deep. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, it's on the same lines. I, I wish I had met you a bit earlier, and um, after marriage, we would have a lot of time to spend together before we start welcoming children. I wish I we married when I was 23 or something, so that we can be free with our children for like five years. <laughs> Quite young. <laughs> Before children would come. I was and thinking like start um, running around the house. <laughs> I was thinking like maybe twenty-five. Mm. Okay, it's not too far from twenty-three, but twenty-five is okay. Okay. So what do you think is the most challenging moment in our marriage? Hmm. Uh, honestly, I I cannot pinpoint, even though with you know, every day of life is you know a challenge of itself. I cannot pinpoint because I personally have this thing I do. I know you you've noticed that sometimes when I'm alone I speak to myself and sometimes you walk up on me and you ask me, ah, what am I saying? I do that in the way to prepare myself. Sometimes I ask myself questions and deal with it. So and some of the things that I say to myself are possible challenges that we may have. So 
when they come, I realize, okay, this is how I'm going to go about it. So most of the challenges we have is nothing extraordinary to me. It's mm. things that I have prepped my mind over and over again. And, you know, it's like, so I, I can't really pinpoint to, you know, a very challenging moment that I would say this one, the, uh, it's, uh, it's just by God's grace. Mm. Yeah. That's true, it's by God's grace that we've come this far. Um, but there was a very difficult situation uh, that later turned into something like happiness for us. Uh, uh, that situation where um, one of my relatives was convicted of a crime wrongfully and he went into, you know, he was convicted of a crime and that was a very difficult moment for us. You encouraged me, you worked with me, you know, you encouraged my family, everyone else, and that phase just went by. And I think that, that's the only challenging point or period in our lives. What will make you leave me? <laughs> if, if you stop believing in God, if you stop being God-fearing and start to do things that um, we do not agree on, you know, uh, probably if you go marry another woman, <laughs> I can't even think of that, but if you go having an affair with someone else yeah I think that would just be a deal breaker for me <laughs> uh, for me I I cannot pinpoint what you do that will make me leave you because I you know I went through a lot of you know prep and and then I also, you know, sought the face of God. Then I know what I saw in you. I understand sometimes, you know, people change, but I don't think it's that drastic. When people will change, if you want to see, you would see it. Man, I do not, you know, see anything like that in you. And like you said, if if you if you should drift away from God, I think that would be very critical to because we are all in this not because we are special or we we know what we are about or like we have everything figured out it's just that it's just us trusting God to take mm -hmm. us to so the moment you take him out of the picture everything comes down yeah. <sighs> what one thing do you wish I could do more often. No, you could do more often. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> oh. <laughs> I wish. Hmm, I wish sometimes when you are angry at me, you will. You know, sometimes when you're angry, it's like. You take it personal, Lisa. For me, sometimes it's funny. It's personal. For me. <laughs> I don't know, like taking the thing World Cup. Like, it will, you know, it will, you know, you love me. And you are angry as if, say, when I can <laughs> walk out from your house. And so I would wish that sometimes you just, you know, let things go. Even though it's not to say that you are going to encourage me to always trigger you to get angry, but. I feel sometimes, you know, just see it as one of those things. I think when you do that more often, I'll, I'll, be, I'll appreciate that. Okay. Um, How about you? What do you want me to do more? I'd want you to be involved with me when, like, those little things like cooking. Fine. Oh, yeah, you cook with me, but I want it to be very, very often. <laughs> um, cooking. Uh, chores, other chores, um, 
then reading the Bible, you know, more often just to build our faith. Um, we pray, we pray, and I wish that would be more often too. Yeah, I think that's it. No. What one thing I do around the house that annoys you? <laughs> Maybe when you don't put your clothes at the right place. But I do seem to sometimes. Let me think of another thing. <laughs> because you do it too. So you, because you do it too, you want to find something else that I do. Um, that, that's not really annoying. Uh, the most annoying thing you do. I can't really think of any, but you say something <laughs> about me. I think one thing I find annoying about you is like sometimes you appear to be too prim and proper. Like even when <laughs> I'm even, you know, using the cotton bad my hair, you, you know, you, you, like <laughs> I don't know, sometimes you, feel, you act like you are from the royal family. Ah, really? That's not true. It's true, sometimes, like normal human stuff, you know. I know things that, you know, you can't do in public or among strangers mm -hmm. that I think, you know, we being married couples, it should be personal. It should be. Sometimes. Wow. You, you make it seem like, ah, like, this is I get action. a bit irritated sometimes. What do you say? I get a bit irritated by... Not that. irritating, but... No, irritated by those things. You behave like you went to a silly girls. <laughs> <laughs> is that the <laughs> right expression you want to use? That's how you... That's the only expression. <laughs> but you went to a girls, but ah. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> okay, so how have I contributed positively to our marriage? There are lots of things that you've you've done. From in fact, even giving me that opportunity to even be with you is a form of contribution, and. Um, you um, agreeing to do everything with me together. One thing too that um, I have observed that, in fact, it's a contribution, but I would like to learn from you is, you know, this thing you do with your diary. You know, my, I, ha I have my grandfather and my great grandfather's diaries, and sometimes when I read through it, I could see certain things about your life, and it's very interesting. Some are dated in the 1800s, and I see you do that along, and it's like something that is very beautiful. I think even if our if our children should come and they see it, they'll be happy. And I think it's some a tradition that we can continue. It's yeah. for me, it's a big deal for me that I should also learn from you and start doing. Mm. Maybe next year you get a diary and start writing too. Yeah. Um, okay, for me, uh, for quite a long time, I believe I suffer from inferiority complex sometimes. And since you came into my life, you've made me understand that, uh, I mean, great things that people are achieving, I could also achieve that too. I'm not, they are not superior to me. They are not, I'm not any different to them. And so I should be more confident. You encourage me to be more confident, um, take up new opportunities to put myself out there. That's what I really like about you. And I think that's the positive thing um, that has changed in my life. I think that's the last one. Okay. Have you ever thought about my death and what you do if I died today? Mm. God forbid. 
<laughs> I don't know if I'm paranoid, but I don't know if everyone also thinks this sometimes, but at times I could be there and then just think, hey, so what if, God forbid, my brother died, my sister died, or my parents died, or you die. <laughs> When I think about those things, tears just well up in my eyes because I wouldn't imagine how to cope with that situation, what to do, how to live without you. Well, before I met you, I was living without you, but you know, <laughs> how I live without you and all that. It will be very difficult, but I know that God will give you many more years. He'll give us many more years too stay with each other, do life together. You know, I, I don't know if I've told you this before, that when I was in school, mm -hmm. um, you, uh, Prisek, we went to University of Ghana to go and swim, and it was my first time ever. I had never swam before. <laughs> and I just jumped into the 20 <laughs> foot side of the pool. <laughs> and I just went down. And I don't know, it was, I, I knew that was it. That was the end. <laughs> I, I couldn't do anything. And so I, as I was standing at the foot of the pool, I was praying to God that, fine, if I was stubborn and I'm about to die, it's okay. But for the sake of my mom, I was thinking about my mom more <laughs> than myself. For the sake of my mom, just perform a miracle so that there because I don't know how she'll handle it. Mm. She's so dear to me, you know, we share the same birthday. So I prayed and by miracle by that's I decided to come out. Someone saw me struggling and then the person pulled me out. So for me, it's not really about how I feel, but how other people mm. who feel about me who probably think I'll be so broken and that, you know, they would want to comfort me, but I'm also, I, I feel maybe God will give me the grace to handle, but I feel other people will be broken. You will and handle that it will, because you've been gone. Yeah. Well, that would be <laughs> very hard for me, especially if knowing how my mom likes mm. you a lot, and she gets to find out, I'll be uh, <laughs> I pray that it will be far away from us, until the time when everyone is ready. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs>